The coronavirus is claiming new victims today as the CDC announces the first confirmed case of COVID-19 spreading to a pet ferret. Hear just how little of a shit Americans could give about the new discovery. And later, is it time to take your pills? Yes, it is. This is your daily reminder to take your pills. If you enjoyed this feature, please rate and review the topical on Apple Podcasts to let us know. From the Onion and Onion Public Radio, I'm Leslie Price, and this is The Topical. Don't go anywhere, because we're also going to remind you to go check your mailbox later. So stay with us. As of this week, more than 80,000 people in the United States have been reported to have died from the coronavirus, but officials are now saying that these totals have failed to capture the true number of Americans dying in this pandemic. So how are we missing these other deaths? Well, recent investigations have revealed that the coronavirus may have been covering its tracks by making victims' deaths look like car accidents as far back as January. OPR's Charles Dearborn joins me now with more on these troubling findings. Hello, Charles. Hi, Leslie. How did these cases go undetected for so long? Well, on the surface, these car accidents look like any other accident you might see on the side of the road. A vehicle flipped over in a ditch or twisted metal wrapped around a tree while a body lies in a mangled mess inside. And with poor winter road conditions, it made sense. In many of these cases, medical examiners didn't think at all to test for COVID-19. Well, if that's the case, then what tipped off officials to recognize these cover-ups? Well, once spring came, the number of accidents did didn't seem to be slowing at all, but rather they were increasing and becoming even more severe. I spoke with Detective Phil Malnick of the New York City Police Department, who pinpointed exactly when his team began seeing suspicious signs that these crashes were no accident. We started finding dead bodies in cars that had either been driven off a cliff or crashed through a bridge guardrail into a river, but there was never any drinking or inclement weather involved. One car even appeared to have been set on fire after it failed to explode on impact with a gas station pump. But most peculiar was forensics found that many of the victims had died hours before the accidents even happened. Then, of course, there was the condition of the automobiles. Clean. Hmm. What does Detective Malnick mean by clean? Apparently, the inside of the cars were too clean, as if they had been sanitized to remove any trace of a virus. He says the interior would smell faintly of bleach or Clorox wipes. Wow, okay. So coronavirus was knocking people off unabated and covering up hits for the better part of 2020. How did authorities eventually come to realize that COVID was the culprit? Well, in many of the cases, the victim's lungs had been either removed or completely destroyed Ooh. until right around March. March. According to Detective Malnick, that's when COVID-19 started getting sloppy. A car had crashed into a cement barrier, looked very open and shut. But then we noticed the brake lines had been cut, so we looked a little closer. And that's when we saw that, unlike all the other bodies, this victim's lungs were still in his chest cavity. Our medical examiner found the lungs air sacs filled with mucus and fluid, a common side effect related to COVID-19. Wow, what a conniving little virus. So what kind of numbers are we looking at now for coronavirus deaths in the U.S.? It could be thousands more. However, now that police and health officials have caught on to the ruse, they're worried that COVID-19 may have changed its M.O. We're looking into several odd-looking elevator shaft falls, boat drownings, and a few suicides that just don't add up. Now... We're not saying all of these are coronavirus related. They could have been accidents or caused by jealous lovers or greedy business partners. But we're not taking anything for granted with this disease anymore. The one thing I can tell you is that coronavirus is much more widespread than we first thought. Detective Malnick's team is also considering opening up several missing persons cases in case COVID-19 killed them and then dumped their bodies somewhere. Charles, does this change at all what we should be doing to keep ourselves safe from coronavirus? Oh, definitely. In addition to wearing a mask when going outside and frequently washing your hands, health officials are also recommending that you stay inside as much as possible, with the doors locked and the curtains drawn. If you do have to leave your home, make sure to change up your routes and check over your shoulder every now and then to see if you're being followed. And always avoid the edge of train platforms and open windows in case COVID-19 takes the opportunity to sneak up behind you. If you start to show symptoms of being stalked by the coronavirus, you should contact the police immediately. Good advice. I know I'll be asking my wife to start the car every morning from now on just in case. Thank you, Charles. That's OPR's Charles Dearborn.
If you think you've heard that song before, it's because you have. That's right, it's the new national pump-up anthem the U.S. government has started playing regularly throughout the day at full volume across the country to combat the growing listlessness and disillusionment that citizens have been experiencing during these trying times. OPR's Marcy Hammond joins us now with more. Marcy, I gotta admit, this song really slaps. Well, that's exactly what the U.S. government was hoping you'd think. The pump-up anthem is called Hey Hey America, and more than $400 million was allocated to creating the upbeat banger, all in an effort to reinvigorate an American populace that has been slowly sinking into a funk of inactivity and cynicism. I spoke with New Jersey Representative Donald Norcross, who headed up the special congressional committee tasked with creating the kick-ass jam. We just wanted to inspire the millions of Americans feeling directionless and despondent to jump up from their couches, desks, or automobiles and walk out into the street to dance their cares away. From a safe distance, of course. And we encourage all Americans to participate, no matter how young or old. You can tap your toes, snap your fingers, rhythmically sway back and forth, or even have a full-out headbanging jam sesh during the entire blistering three-minute guitar solo. And the anthem has already started playing simultaneously through tens of thousands of giant speakers set up across the country. Morning, afternoon, and night, the fun bass line and repetitive drum beats echo for hundreds of miles several times a day from coast to coast. Quite the feat. Well, I know I could certainly use the extra pep in my step, but how are other Americans reacting to the new pump-up anthem? Well, overall, reactions have been positive. Here are a few people I spoke with. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's been a great distraction from my otherwise pointless existence. I didn't think I'd like having the same song blaring from speakers several times a day, but now it's the only time I actually feel like I'm a part of something greater than myself. This fucking song makes it impossible for me to focus on anything, and I think it's putting weird thoughts into my head about submitting to authority. I don't know, but it's driving me crazy! Well, I sure am crazy for this song, too. But Marcy, as the young man pointed out, there has been some criticism of the greatest song ever made. Yeah. How are government officials responding to rumors that the anthem contains subliminal messages of nationalism, conformity, and subordination? Well, they say that these conspiracy theories should be put to rest once everyone learns the coordinated dance that goes along with the Pump Up Anthem remix when it's released next month. But until then, just... Obey. Oh, you know I will. Let's go, oh, it must be 3 a.m. Oh, I hear it too. Let's get up and dance for the country, Marcy. Woo, yeah. Fucking mm-hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Shake it up. Oh, yeah. Woo. Shake it up, Marcy. Woo, you got the move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's OPR's Marcy Hammond. We'll be back in a moment. USA. 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 Well, folks, during these trying times where social isolation is the norm and American citizens are asked to stay inside, companionship has become a top priority. Unsurprising to those of you who already have one of these special friends at home, a new report has found that the nation's current quarantine has led to a sharp rise in people taking in lovable little foster gimps. OPR's Martha Sanders has the story. Social Isolation Since the beginning of March, Americans have been asked to keep six feet away from family, friends, and loved ones. But how are people coping with their newfound loneliness? One solution is to adopt or rescue a foster gimp. Right now, I'm at a shelter in San Francisco. However, instead of the wall-to-wall cages full of bald and gagged 200-pound men begging for mercy that I'm accustomed to, they're virtually empty. Except for just a few. Oh, look at that one. Nice leather. Come on, Daddy. Come on. Cute. I saw this one online. He apparently got shipped up here from Alabama and likes to have his balls twisted. Check this one out. He's a mini. That's Annie Walsh, who runs the shelter. Ever since she started posting photos of her doming the gimps on Instagram, people have been picking them up and bringing them back to their fuck rooms like hotcakes. It's incredible. Since Shelter in Place started, we've been getting calls nonstop. We used to get people dropping off their gimps, or we'd find tons of strays abandoned out back eating out of the garbage can. But now, we can't truck them in fast enough. Wow, that's incredible. Do you see certain types of gimps going first? I'll be honest. Usually it's just the young ones that get picked up the fastest. 
But now, even the older gimps, or the ones with some pretty serious medical problems, are finally finding a home. Suddenly, where there were too many gimps before, there are now none. Even her home basement dungeon, where she used to keep at least six gimps, is now occupied by just her own rescue sub. So why do you think Americans suddenly want to become doms so badly? You know, it varies. Some people didn't have the time or resources to buy the whips, chains, and titty cups their gimp would likely require. Others are so bored they can't orgasm to completion anymore unless they dominate another human until they shit themselves. And it makes sense. Americans are severely overworked. Do most full-time workers really have the time to take a gimp out every few hours and walk all over it? It can take weeks, if not months, of routine domination to train a gimp to respond to your whip. Bad. Bad. So bad, you bitch, you filthy fucking animal. Yeah, you like that. I spoke to Jenna and Chris Haskell, who recently took the plunge and adopted a 62-year-old sub named Cumlicker. He was older than what they were looking for, but that didn't stop Jenna and Chris from doming him like they'd had him imprisoned for years. So, you've had Cumlicker for two weeks now? Yeah, and it's the best. The minute we looked into his small, sweaty eye slits, We knew he was the one for us. Has his age been difficult for you at all? I know some senior gimps have different needs. Yeah, it wasn't easy. He definitely gets tired out and ends up falling asleep a lot in his fuck swing. But that's how we like it. As someone who lives alone and was hoping to one day adopt a gimp myself, I was curious. Was all the extra time and money worth it? He's definitely bad around our kids. And whoever was his previous dom did some weird stuff to him because he has some kinks we can't quite figure out. And for the past few nights, he's kept us up all night whining. But there's something about him that we just love. Down! Stop humping! You hump when we tell you! Times might be tough for Americans right now, but for gimps who finally found their forever dungeon, things certainly got a whole lot better. For OPR, I'm Martha Saunders. Thank you, Martha. You know, this whole quarantine, I've really been missing the gimp we had in our childhood home that my parents kept screaming like a pig in the basement. A home just isn't a home without a little sex slave. You can find more information on how you can adopt a sub of your very own on our website. Back in a moment. Let's face it, folks, you're all a little too simple to ever really understand everything you need to know, but this might help you get a little closer. Here's what else you need to know today. A big announcement from the nation today as all 327 million Americans clarified they do not want to see a Zoom episode of the CBS sitcom Broke. Citizens across the country were adamant that in no way, shape, or form did they desire to see a 22-minute quarantine-themed installation of the show that follows a single suburban mother and her estranged wealthy sister, calling the idea of an episode set in video conferencing software, quote, a complete waste of our precious time. And Google is looking to improve their popular web mapping and navigation service, Google Maps, unveiling today a new feature that offers shortcuts through houses of people that Google knows aren't home. Sounds like a good way to shave a few minutes off my commute. And finally, a bit of good news. Melania Trump and her Italian male lover welcomed a beautiful seven-pound baby girl into the world today. At a press conference this morning, the proud papa announced the arrival of little Gia Giuseppina and said that both mom and baby were healthy and resting. Congrats to the happy couple and big brother Baron. And that's it for The Topical Today. I'm Leslie Price. If you enjoyed today's episode in kind of the same way someone enjoys watching a scary movie or footage of plane crashes, well, then you can like and subscribe to The Topical wherever you get your podcast, because there's plenty more where that came from. And don't forget to join us for tomorrow's episode for a conversation with a controversial historian who claims the Founding Fathers would have approved of pretty much anything happening today if you got them drunk enough. Until then, this has been The Topical, and we'll see you next time. The news doesn't stop just because this YouTube video has. For even more on all the worst things happening in the world right now, listen and subscribe to The Topical on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, you insatiable news freaks.